1994 death of Kurt Cobain and the dissolution of Nirvana, Novoselic, who also has a band called Sweet 75, launched Jam Pack, the Joint Artist and Music Promotions Political Action Committee, which is designed to fight censorship and advance the political interests of Washington state rock musicians. When Kurt's death instantly ended Nirvana, it created extreme pain for the surviving band members. Not only they needed to navigate the passing of their best friend, but they were also had to seriously consider their careers. Today, we're turning the spotlight on Chris Novoselic, the guy who co-founded and played bass for Nirvana. We're going to focus on his journey after Nirvana, where we explore his unique blend of music and politics, including the notable backlash from his endorsement of Donald Trump. But before we start, if you're new here, hit subscribe and push the like button to help us beat the algorithm. Over 20 years ago, Chris experienced a long lasting grief due to losing his bandmate and high school friend. During an interview with Kareem, he revealed that he became depressed because of the trauma and it took him a long time to come to terms with it. He also blamed addiction and the immense pressure he faced, saying if Kurt had been in a clearer state of mind, he might not have chosen that path. But shortly after, Chris had to seriously consider his future. He started new bands, each showcasing a different sound. In 1995, he launched Sweet 75. Then in 2002, Novo Zelic formed Eyes Adrift, collaborating with musicians from the Meat Puppets and Sublime. This group carved out its own niche in alternative rock. From 2006 to 2009, he joined the punk band Flipper, infusing his unique style into their established sound. Since 2017, Novo Selic has been part of Giants in the Trees, playing both bass and accordion. More recently, in 2022, he has been working with Soundgarden members, with production by Jack and Dino in a new band called Third Secret. These bands, though, never reached the same level of fame as Nirvana, but Chris doesn't seem to mind this. When asked if he was jealous of Dave Grohl's success, he addressed it in 2012, stating that he was not envious of Dave's accomplishments, emphasizing that Dave worked hard for his success, and the Foo Fighters earned their fame. And I always have a lot of fun when we're, when we're together. David Eric Grohl, he's the man. You know, people ask me, he goes, you ever jealous of Dave and everything he's done since Nirvana? And I'm like, listen, man, he has stayed focused, he has worked hard. He rocks. The Foo Fighters rock. How do you be jealous of something like that? I mean, he's earned everything he's worked for. Which brings us to the juicy part. Why didn't Chris join Dave Grohl in the Foo Fighters? For a while, Dave Grohl completely removed himself from the limelight before recording the first Foo Fighters album. Then the demo started to attract attention from labels, and he did not want it to be viewed as solo career. <laughs> So he recruited the group that became the first version of Foo Fighters. It included Nirvana touring guitarist Pat Smear, Nate Mendel, and William Goldsmith. Now, given that Pat Smear was in Foo Fighters, it has made us wonder why Chris was not in the lineup. Here's the scoop. After Nirvana, Chris wasn't chasing the spotlight like before. On the other hand, Dave poured his heart into this new venture. Some suggest that he was already developing his own material while he was still a member of Nirvana, hinting at the possibility that he might have been contemplating leaving and starting his own band. That's a complete story we've covered. You can find it in the description below.
back to Chris and the Foo Fighters. Turns out it wasn't about bad blood or drama. Dave himself said it would have felt really natural to have Chris on board, but they decided it wasn't the best move. One of the reasons is it might have been a bit awkward for the other members. And also, the pressure would have been sky high to keep up with Nirvana's legacy. When appearing on The Howard Stern Show in 2021, Dave said that they jam occasionally alongside Pat Smear and have even recorded music together, but never done anything with it. So Chris and Dave went down their own paths, but they remained connected through the years, sharing the stage a few times, like during their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2014, or when Chris texted Grohl about a Nirvana reunion, which led to another collaboration. They reunited on stage for a surprise six song set and they were joined by Joan Jett and John McCauley. Now, let's take a turn into a different kind of stage that Chris stepped onto after Nirvana. Well, the man we used to watch throw his bass guitar in the air is now in politics. In June 2020, Chris created significant controversy with a Facebook post regarding President Donald Trump. His remarks were in response to Trump's law and order speech during the George Floyd protest, where he threatened to use military against protesters. Christ praised Trump as strong and direct and supported his approach to bring peace. But this move surprised all fans, considering the rebellious spirit of Nirvana. It led to a lot of talks online, expressing disappointment and confusion. He then set his Facebook profile to private and deleted his Twitter account. After this backlash, Chris tried to clarify his stance, saying that he does not support fascism or an authoritarian state. He identified as an independent and he does not completely agree with Trump's policies or actions. After this negative reaction, his political views seem to have taken a new direction. So here's what's going on with him now. So um, how do you self-describe politically? I'm an anarcho-capitalist, socialist, I don't know. I'm kind of a moderate, I think I'm moderate. Christ is really into this idea called ranked choice voting. This is a different way for people to vote where you can rank candidates in the order you like them. If the top choice doesn't get enough votes, the vote can go to the next favorite. Chris thinks this is a better way because it gives more chances to different kinds of candidates, not just the big party ones. In 2023, Chris became part of a group called the Forward Party, unlike the big parties we usually hear about. The Forward Party tries to find middle ground and solve problems without sticking to one side. He's also working with a fair vote. They're all about changing the voting system to make it fairer and give more power to voters. Besides all this political stuff, Chris hasn't forgotten his music roots. He used to write a weekly column that talked about both music and politics, showing how these two worlds can come together. In short, after the whole deal with Trump's speech, Chris has been busy trying to change how politics works. He's mixing his love for music with his interest in politics, and he's trying to make a difference in a new way. So now we'd like to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Chris's political shift following the backlash? Please share your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.